And it is a pleasure for me to start this presentation about value proposition and business model, not only because it's the first uh, topic, but also because we have you know, been showing that it is the foundation as well and the starting point for most of the entrepreneurs based on our experience and also um, based on the way that we live uh, doing businesses in the region. Uh, so the purpose of this presentation is going to be sharing with you first our experience and also knowledge that we have gathered across and after all the programs that we have conducted and share with you what is the approach or the perspective and how much do we know actually about value proposition and business model and specifically because we work with minorities uh, um, and also underserved and under-resourced entrepreneurs. Therefore, knowledge is also part of that concept. And I, I, I have been able to see that. And uh, the purpose of this, meet, this meeting as well is to share with you how we can still leverage that um, the knowledge that it is available, interestingly, in different uh, fields in the startup uh, arena but not necessarily in the small business field. So that's the purpose of this session as well. Share with you what we have learned, share with you how we can leverage the knowledge that is available in different sectors of the business market or the or different markets, but also make it um, you know, useful for small business owners and especially for our beneficiaries as well. So that's uh, the idea. Well, talking about value proposition, <clears throat> which is, we're gonna consider it as the foundation of uh, a business startup, okay? So we're gonna start with that assumption. Then after the session, I hope that we can also learn that it is actually one of the main uh, purpose of, purposes in focus um, for any business, regardless of the industry. Uh, in my experience working with tech startups and also after with small business owners, I've noticed that even though the concept for some of them can be very well known and very popular, the application is different and also the use of the of the concepts is uh, is different as well. So how much do we know about value proposition? Well, we can see that there are, the concept is um, well known for some of the um, so for, for some groups. It has been published and posted in different either scientific rep uh, reports or publications and also different articles from very um, you know, popular and very important universities here in the US. However, on the other hand, based on our experience working with small business owners and entrepreneurs, especially in the region, we have noticed that for some of them is a pretty new concept. The value proposition, interestingly, for example, this is a, the result of a survey that we uh, share with an audience of a specific group, a Spanish uh, speaker community. And we've noticed after you know the first session, we ask, what is the main concept that you never heard before? And actually value proposition was one of the main uh, answers. And you know, for us, and especially for me, it was very interesting to see that. And this is actually a chart where you can see it is also, in, um, unfortunately, it is in Spanish. However, in red, you can see here that 23% of uh, the audience that we ask about this question, uh, about this concept, you can tell that <clears throat> almost um, a quarter of the population actually reported that was not actually familiar with the concept, value proposition, all right? And uh, this was just last year, and the concept has been around since decades. So it's very interesting how in the same region, I'm talking about Inland Empire, Orange County, the Bay Area, uh, you can have startups, and also in the Inland Empire as well, you can have startups learning and pre being pretty well uh, known and familiar with the concept, value proposition, and therefore business model design. But for, for another type of population, it's totally unknown and new, right? So the idea for us as a Caravanserai project as well is to fill that gap and also share with them how they can use this concept. And this is actually 
uh, a need, in my opinion, not only for small business owners in the region that speaks I, that speak either Spanish or English, but also for the tech startup field in the same region, based on my experience as well. So having said that, I'd like to you know, invite you to see this presentation as um, by taking a different approach of the concept value proposition. And I would like to invite you to see this based or through different lens, through different audiences that we have the experience to work with. So for that, and before we start, um, I'd like to be uh, on the same page with you first and share with you what is the most popular or maybe most common uh, definition of value proposition. We're going to say that value proposition is an statement or a list of unique benefits or value that a product, service, or offerings provides to its customers. So first, one of the main keywords here uh, on this definition is list benef benefits and product service offering and customers. Okay. So it seems like we have two parts or two sides. First, product service, what is offered, and then the customers. And it can be pretty intuitive. But if we see this definition, we can tell that sometimes it is taken from a um, an external perspective from the product, from, from the service, um, and from the customer, something that is outside of actually the business owner, the entrepreneur. So value proposition as a definition, it looks pretty um, well put together, I would say, uh, pretty well structured as well. However, it takes a long process and a very you know, unique process as well to come up with a list of actual benefits for a specific group of people that is called the customers, right? And this is why uh, we want to address the value proposition as well from the business owner, from the entrepreneur, entrepreneur's perspective, so that we can not only integrate the concept, um, you know, as a definition, but also as a way to act and live your business. It is very important, because, especially for people that it, it is starting a business. Once we uh, adapt and adopt the skill of finding and you know refining a value proposition, then the rest is actually pretty clear for a business. That's why I'm showing you here the picture of a compass. Once we understand and we are able to find the value proposition for our business and uh, the value proposition that we are offering to our customers, then we use it as a compass that will allow, will allow us to find the North Star for a business. I don't know if you're familiar with that concept in business. North Star for a business is basically the purpose of the business. Sometimes, and it's going to happen for many of you as business owners, entrepreneurs, even as a mentor sometimes, so that you can guide your um, businesses and mentees, sometimes you will find that, especially when the business is either starting or maybe expanding, we are gonna lose track. We are not gonna be um, clear on where it's supposed that we are going at the end of the day. So going back to the basics means going back to the value proposition, but also it's not, it's not only going back to the value proposition as a definition, but also it's knowing how to do it how to go back, how to again review my value proposition. That's why the exercise of creating, constantly creating, constantly refine your value proposition means the starting point, means your compass so that you can also and always find your North Star for your business, right? So after this, this uh, definition of value proposition, um, now I'd like to shift the perspective in terms of, and from now taking it from the uh, business owner or from the entrepreneur's perspective or vision. So the value proposition from that point of view crystallizes actually the most important and unique skill for business owners, which is the ability to find value. Find value, I'd like to make a difference between find value and create value. So we are going to very, very early st steps. We're taking very, very early steps for actually build the value proposition from the business owner's perspective. 
finding value and then with that creating a value proposition means a long journey in terms of learning in terms of developing development sorry um as a business owner as well the more you experience um ways to find value the most you explore ways to find value you the better you will find unique benefits for your customers or for for or to whom uh, or for you are interested in offering these uh, benefits that's why it's important the ability to find value is something that in the long term you cannot either pay for you cannot hire you cannot outsource so in my uh, perspective as well as a mentor and also I, my advice after seeing several entrepreneurs I would say that over a, over 400 now and uh, in different areas different industry sectors my recommendation will always be you can always hire an accountant you can always hire a finance guy you can always hire an attorney but it's not possible to hire someone who is able to find value and also see business opportunities. That's why it is a skill. And then value proposition is basically how you encapsulate that skill. So the more you know, the more you master this skill, your value proposition is, is always going to be um, reaching the perfection, if you, want, if you want to put it in that way. And, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I want to bring these concepts because the more you learn and the more you master this skill, the better and the most beautiful, if you want to put it in this way, is your value proposition. And when I mean, what I try to say with this is the most perfect and also it creates less uh, friction for when you want to convey a message for your customer, your customer, your customer will see it immediately. Okay, that's the the idea of actually this slide. In my opinion, this is the most important slide. This is the message that at the end of the day, I'd like to convey with you. This is our finding as well. After noticing that sometimes, especially small business owners, they struggle a lot with either cash flow. And uh, I understand that from the technical point of view is very important, right? Uh, from the operational point of view as well. But the solution is kind of easy. I mean, if you have funds at the end of the day, if you know how to raise the funds, if you find these type of opportunities and resources, you're going to be good. Someone else can do it for you at the end of the day. But what no one else can do for you is actually to master this ability, this capacity, this skill to actually know and uh, know the value, find the value. Um, and why is this important? Because once you know how to do it, actually, it creates the unique factor for your value proposition and for your business. That's why it's important that you, as a business owner, see the value proposition as a concept that basically represents your skills or your the, the level of mastering this skill. Uh, by the way, I would like to stop this uh, presentation for now and invite you to ask questions. I'm going to try to pay attention to the chat. However, if you, uh, Mihai can help me with any questions, that would be great as well for mm -hmm. Sierra. No, no, not questions so far, but uh, uh, if anyone has any questions or uh, please jump in. If not, we'll uh, have some time at the end for uh, Q&A, right, Karen? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move Thank forward. You. Thank you. And so I, as I was, um, you know, commenting about the experience that we have had with the audience that we have trained and also um, we have connect with. We noticed that at least we have worked with three different groups that are pretty similar to what you can find in the business area as well, in terms of based on the development of their idea or maybe business. We're gonna have, and for the purpose of this session as well, so that we can review the concept of value proposition and business model, we are gonna um, analyze them from different perspectives, from the beginner's uh, perspectives, meaning that it is the group of people that is exploring the idea of becoming an entrepreneur and starting a business. From the early stage per perspective, which is a group of people that is on board, they are starting their businesses, <clears throat> they are taking the first steps, to start their businesses. And um, lastly, the savvy group, which is the most experienced group of entrepreneurs. 
And even though just, you know, uh, as a, an interesting finding for us, they are savvy in terms of uh, having the experience of either starting different businesses. However, going to the basics, uh, we have also uh, learned with them and from them that there are many concepts that are also basics that once we review them and apply them and refine them again, they can improve their businesses and they can expand as well. All right. So based on that and based on these uh, three groups, I'd like to review first the value proposition and the business model. And again, after this um, approach to review these concepts, the idea for the session is also to provide tips so that you can pay attention or maybe focus your attention on how you can either refine your value proposition, maybe review it, maybe uh, improve it if you want, maybe um, assess your value proposition if you already worked on it, you know, lately. So the idea for this uh, session is providing you our findings, also providing tips on where you can pay attention if you want, based on the level of expertise and experience as well, or based on the level of development of your business, so that you keep an eye based on what we have seen on where we always have to make pay attention to create a good value proposition and good business model design. And Ultimately, the concept of value proposition and business model, I like to convey the message that it's not a static concept, but it's an action. Value proposition is related with I find, I find value, and business model is related with I create value. Those are two different actions that I'd like to invite you to see. And also, um, in a practical point of view, take it with you on your day-to-day uh, operations in a business, because this is the other, um, you know, interesting fact. We have several and lots, there are lots of articles about business model that I really enjoyed, several authors as well. But at the end of the day, when you, you know, uh, finish a book, maybe when you finish reading an article or watching a video, then you go to your business and you basically do the same as you have been you know, doing before reading the article. It's very difficult to actually grasp any idea that you can put into action at some point, especially with these concepts that are very, theor uh, are very related with the theory. So the purpose of this session as well is relate these concepts. Value proposition with I find is a skill. I have to master it so that I can find value. The value is there, the value exists already. And then business model is the way that I can create value for what I am doing based on or, or while I am creating a product or a service. We're going to discuss about it later. All right. As I mentioned, value proposition is a, uh, an statement of benefit. <clears throat> I'd like you to please uh, bear with me on the word benefits and customer. One of the um, main definition or basic concepts of related with value proposition is the customer concept. For businesses, um, of course, customer is a person or someone who is actually or might be uh, paying for what I'm doing. This is one of the first uh, perceptions of, especially from small business owners, customer is who is paying for what I'm doing or what I'm preparing, right? Based on the business model they have, the customer ended up being the end user and you know the buyer as well. So those are three different concepts and definitions within a business ecosystem. But basically what I'd like to share here with you is that the customer is always a person. For us to create and define a good value proposition, we have to consider that it is a person. It's not an alien, it's a human being, and it's for whom we create that value. And in that way, we can increase the revenue for our organization. Why I'm saying this? Because most of the small business owners, when they are starting, they especially when they have a B2B business models, meaning that my business can offer or deliver a service or a product for another business, not necessarily uh, for an individual, they identify the customer, the other business, which is the customer in this case, as the actual customer. So we always have to consider, and this is one of the first findings, of course, that for you, for most of you can be 
uh, obvious or maybe already known, but we have seen this. Sometimes they th they, um, they consider the business as a customer. The customer is always a person. Therefore, there's always someone that is inside of that building, inside of that entity, is working in that and for that entity with whom I do handshake, all right? And this is important for us to see and also find a good source of information to actually find the value that we've been looking for. So having said that, the customer, since it is a person, is also a new world for us. It's not only someone who is in need of something, but it's also a person that has a life, all right? So the main, um, and I'm gonna identify the groups and I'm gonna you know, discuss where I have and we have observed that this group are focusing when they have to analyze the customers. Um, as we mentioned, customers are, it is an individual. The customer is a person, a human being, right? Therefore, I have to see it as a human being, the same, the same as I am, right? For the beginners group, most of them, they analyze the customers based on what we've seen in different articles, the need of the customer. The opportunity sometimes, but it's either the need or the problem. So most of the businesses, even tech startups, they are always looking for solving a problem and you know, uh, meeting a need. That's why most of them, they, have, they may have similar business models as well, okay? So the invitation for, uh, especially after this slide, after uh, reviewing this slide is to see the customer and, under and understand, appreciate that the customer, since it is a person, an individual, is more than a need, it's more than a problem that I can fix, that I can meet, all right? The customer can be analyzed through different layers, all right? One of those, and the next one, I could say based on the level of development of either the business itself, but also the awareness of the business owners, because the business owner, the more they see, the more they pay attention to different things, and the more they go back to the basics and then they see things differently, of course, right? So the customer is the same thing. When we have a beginner group, they always say, oh, the customer needs this. Uh, this is the problem that I fi I'm fixing, which is the, ba the, the initial uh, part, you know, this, the basics, if you want to call it in that way. Then we have the other group, the early stage, they are already more on board and they notice that it's not only the need and also the pain of the customer, they go a little bit beyond, <clears throat> further. And they also see the customer as the things or the job that they want to get done. All right. Either socially, emotionally, psychologically, professionally, Anything that is more than a need in the immediate pain they may have, right? So analyzing the customer and discovering the customer from that perspective provides more information, then provides more opportunity to find new ways and new, uh, new ways to offer value for my customer and also more benefits that I can offer for uh, a customer. If you notice here in the logo that I'm using for beginners and early stage, if you see them um, as a competitors, for example, who do you think will win the, uh, in front of a customer? Just you know, taking a look at this Canva, just because of the access of information or the focus that they are uh, putting on different aspects of the customer. Who do you think will win? The early stage. The early stage, right? So. Thank you, Jenny. That is the main and very simple message and the invitation of for discovering your customer in different ways, not only pain, not, not let's not get stuck in the pain in the need, because in my opinion, that is also uh, the bottleneck for many of the business that start. And that's the reason, in my opinion as well, <clears throat> I know that we're recording this, but I would like to conduct some research about it. But have you seen or heard about the um, 
um, the numbers of businesses that fail after five years and 10 years, 15 years. Well, and most of them, they kind of not make it after 10 or 15 years for small businesses. Well, in my opinion, the problem is here. Most of them, and this is what uh, they pitch as well, and also it is a little bit of responsibility of the authors of materials and knowledge that is available that we have to renew, in my opinion, uh, for businesses. It is that if we are always focusing on pain and need, it is something that is for today, right? So who is able to see beyond is going to be able to go further. And there, the numbers or uh, about you know the rate of success of businesses is, in my opinion, related to this very simple and basic Canva. So the more you know, the better. For the SAPI group, they are you know exploring more and they get to know the customer from the gains that they can receive after um, maybe uh, seeing a, uh, the list of benefits. What I'm, what I'm trying to say with this is, sometimes a business owner can offer a certain service or product with the idea of either meeting the need, solving the problem, maybe going beyond a little bit and trying to help the customer with the job that they want to get done. And unexpectedly, the customer can see another extra gain, another extra benefit that actually the business owner may have not seen in the past. That is a gain, something that is unexpected, is something that is maybe not clearly related with the initial goal of um, the offering, but it is something that benefits the customer um, at the end of the day. So these three groups explore the customer. The more they explore the customer, the more they know them, not only in terms of the pain and the need, but also in terms of the jobs that they want to get done and the gains that they might discover, because that's the other thing. Even though when a gain is unexpected, we have to make an effort to see, and this requires a lot of creativity as well, on where are the gains for my customer, okay? Let me give you an example. You can be, <clears throat> I always use this example because for me it's one of the kind of most uh, perfect, I don't know. And because I don't remember another one now, but uh, let's say we are in a corporate group. Someone is the head of the human resources and uh, they are basically having a lot of issues because of the attendance or the uh, most of the employees are not actually going to work because they, have issues with, um, um, they are getting sick very often. And also they cannot get, you know, they have to commute a lot. So the rate is not, um, is not good enough. And, um, and let's say that all of them, they have kids, parents, they are parents. So they are first, they need to commit to drop off the kids and then go back to work and the commute and everything is, very, very difficult. And we have a childcare provider and the childcare provider noticed that this uh, head of the HR department is actually struggling with the group of employees. And this childcare provider offers, you know, since it's close or might be close to the, um, to the corporation, they can offer uh, maybe opening a little bit earlier. And in that way, they can serve all these employees. They can drop off their kids, and then they can get uh, go to they can go to work, and that might solve a problem for the HR of this uh, for the, for the HR department. So by doing that, let's assume that the whole group of employees is gonna go and drop and take the services for the uh, from this childcare provider, and they are gonna drop off their kids. Well, the head of the HR department might see or maybe seen an improvement in the attendance of uh, the employees, but also they may notice, and I'm gonna um, make this up, that the team is actually getting along, is you know the culture of the team, the vibe of the team, the energy of the team, they are performing pretty well together, you know, and. This childcare provider notice, notices as well that since they are all 
you know, going together to the same place, they are creating a, a, a specific type of connection, a human connection, right? And that is a game for the actual HR head or, uh, or a leader of this uh, group. So basically the leader first, the person that was having these issues with the employees, just the rate of attendance was low, but because of the services of someone else, actually she or he got more than uh, an improvement of the attendance. She or he may have seen a better uh, relationship between, between the employees and therefore a better performance as a team. That is a game. It's something that they may not seen before. They were not expecting, but it was there because of this new service that is what, that was offering a benefit. So based on that, that's why it's important to also explore what are the gains that might be unexpected, but I can also offer it to my customer. All right. So based on that, I'm going to go, Jenny, do you have a question? Yes, I have a question. Um, that was a good example. So I'm trying to understand the three levels so that I know how to move from one to the other as a business owner. <clears throat> so for example, you mentioned that in this story, in this scenario, the workers were had a difficulty and that was um, their uh, daycare for their children. The employer then provided that which was providing that would that be beginners would that just be solving the pain well you can be beginner or you can be early stage <clears throat> in my opinion it depends on the level of awareness of seeing this gain or not you can be an early stage for example and if you're not willing to explore a little bit more you can um you can never maybe discover that what you were doing as well was providing a gain. So my invitation is not only to see it as a, um, um, a, a layers are separate. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is to, I don't know if you're going to agree with me, but this is the way that I've seen as well businesses in the, in the long term. Um, mm -hmm. Try to mix things, try to uh, combine um things the more you integrate the better i'm going to say something that can sound really different maybe not very uh business appealing but remember we are individuals we are human beings integrate everything we are many things all right so you can see a business from a beginner's perspective but if you are starting a business from the technical point of view from the operational point of view let's say that you just um get your license that doesn't mean that you cannot see the gain and look for a gain immediately on your customer it's all about the way that you see your customer right the beginner is just a stamp or a label that i would like you to um see it as the reality that we have right now with the businesses that we have in the region however the invitation is to go across you know and not um, pay attention only for to the pains. This is actually our data right now. Beginners are always focused on pains. Let's go and move forward. Let's move beyond that, right? You can be a beginner, but you can start immediately thinking about what is the gain that I have to offer for this person. That is the invitation, all right? The same for early stage. Sometimes we are in the middle. For early stage, it's a very gray area. You know, you are in between some uh, starting things. You need funds, but also you need to think about if, how you're going to expand, where are you going, etc. Right. So in that case, I would suggest always invite yourself to see things differently, because the more different you see them, the more you explore these different layers of a customer, you get a very competitive advantage as well. Jerry or Gary, please pardon me. If I'm not pronouncing what your, your first name. 
Thank you. It's it's Jerry. Thank you very much, uh, Carolina. What an insightful answer, and I, I like Jenny's question. Uh, I'm also interested in knowing how to move, you know, from one beginner level um, in terms of exploring value proposition for our organization. But I think something that helps too, um, and and I realize I've been doing a little bit of this already informally, um, is I need to move out of the drama. There's there's a, a lot of drama when they're you know especially when you're when a business or organization is looking at what their what their impact is on on their customers etc maybe the drama is we don't have enough money to fund expansion maybe we have to lay people off maybe you know we etc so there's there's a lot of drama and feelings involved in in looking and staying at a beginner stage and so I think for me one thing that's that's worth it Jenny is I move out of the drama and become a little bit more impartial a little bit more objective um, to look beyond what is the pain it's Itself. I like the word pain. I've never seen it um, used in in this um, in in this kind of a, a format. But I like the idea of moving beyond the pain uh, and using, as you said, Carolina, creativity, creativity. Because you know, if you're involved in the pain and the drama of of everything and focused on people's feelings. Uh, while it might be hard to break away from, well, you know, we, we need to move people around or we need to make changes and it may not benefit this person in the short run, but in the long run, it will, et cetera. Um, that, that helps, you know, for me, that's helped is to move beyond the emotions, the drama of the, of the short term fix and look beyond and look at, uh, to a, an impact down the road after we get through the struggle if that helps thank you yes absolutely jerry thank you so much for your comment i really appreciate it um because uh, i've been trying to stay away of the um, let's say that data because i cannot you know take it as a fact yet so that we can share it but definitely jerry it is the reality of the beginners group it is the reality no um, no i wouldn't call it the reality it is what we've heard based on the way that they see things and uh, the way that they are seeing things right now, um, it is focusing on the need, the pain. Of course, we start, we understand that some of them, especially small business owners, especially in minorities and underserved communities, they uh, struggle, they uh, see it in that way. And that is a choice, all right? However, um, you're right. I mean, the idea, if we want to move a little bit farther, move the needle, especially with these groups, is the perception of that concept, the perception of needs, the perception of, of pain. Okay. The pain, the need, I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, uh, they don't exist. I'm just saying that it can be a launch pad. It can be just, you know, the starting point, but then we have to move quickly to the other layers of the customer, because there is where you have opportunities, more opportunities, more benefits. So the more we move, the better, more improvement, more benefits, more opportunities, more changes, more adaptation in front of any um, ever-changing condition in any volatile market, whatever you wanna call it, you're gonna be fine once we learn that. That's why this is a skill. That's why it is important to communicate that the entrepreneur, the main skill that we have to master, and mastering means that going through these layers, exploring, going beyond the pain. Right? And as a result, based on the Canva uh, that I'm showing here and sharing with you, as a result of this exploration, this research, if you want to call it, about the customer, you will create your benefits, the list of benefits for your customer. And then you will create a, the, the symbol or maybe the how you, you can encapsulate, you know, and drop in all this information into something that we call product and services. The products and services is mainly the representation of your work, exploring, digging deep into your customer. A product and service, I have a cell phone here for, if you see it, right? Someone creates this product and service, but he actually, this is an iPhone, right? Yeah. So he was thinking in something totally different, but I'm seeing it in, 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 in one way, you know, but here behind this product 
as a, is the representation of the work of the job of someone who had a vision earlier than the rest. But you have to see that that person also was many things at the same time. I'm, I'm not going to go into the, the, the life of the person that, you know, create the concept, but it is very interesting that value proposition is also related with who you are, right? What you know. The more you know, the better, because the more you can ask questions to your customer in different ways as well. Right. Now, I'm going to move a little bit uh, quickly through my slides. But again, the um, process of discovering and going through the customer as an individual, as a person, in, in asking questions about everything that has to do with the person. I want to know how your day look like on a regular basis. I want to know if you like some sports. I, I want to know everything about you. Right. In that way, we can create a benefits, and we're not gonna end up being, ended up creating a market uh, concept or a market marketing strategy that is not real. And sometimes it's, it can be also a little bit mani manip manipulative, right? That's hopefully it's not the idea, especially because we in Caravan Celebrate also have discovered that the mission driven purpose or the purpose of a, a business is important and is becoming more important uh, in the future as well. And it has to do with the capacity to find value and to be, you know, clear of those values and the benefit for your customer. Now, for beginners in early stage, since most of them uh, at, the, at the beginning, they are focused on pain and needs, then the outcome is the production or development of pain relievers. And for those who are more savvy, they have the um, this capacity of also see the game creators, right? And then they put everything together in a product or a service that represents basically the outcome of their work, their skills. Right? That's why it's important to see this as a skill. The more that I master it, my product will represent something way more better for my my uh, customer, okay? Now, as we mentioned, um, the value proposition is a list of benefits. When we say benefits, sometimes, especially for the beginners group, it is confused or misunderstood as the list of features of any product or service that I can provide, especially when they don't ask the customer, they don't explore the customer profile, they have an idea, they love it, they fall in love with the idea, and then they start creating a product and investing time and money on that product, all right? And once it's done and completed, at least the pilot or the, um, the first you know, trial of the product or the service, they describe the service for the customer in terms of the list of features of that pro product or service. Let me give you an example. Again, the same for a cell phone. This cell phone, even for some of you it might be obvious, but in the past, of course, we didn't have wireless phones, right? So now the wireless is actually, uh, maybe it can be something like it's for granted or taken for granted, but it is a feature. It is a condition of this device, right? And sometimes when we say, or when we are gonna be offering this product, we can mention, the wireless condition as one of the benefits for my customer. So let's say that after you know learning what it is or what are the benefits for my customer, I say this product is wireless. And I offer it like that and I create a whole a marketing campaign around the wireless condition of this uh, cell phone. But for the customer it may not resonate. Okay, We always have to ask the question, so what? If it's wireless, what does it mean for my customer? What is the actual benefit? That is the main, I could say, learning curve that the beginners always have, is listing a list of, listing the features instead of the benefits. The benefits is always from the customer pers perspective, right? So wireless for a customer can represent connectivity, can represent connection with family, can represent, um, 
fixing a solve uh, uh, fixing a problem easily quickly so it's not the wireless condition the benefits out of the wireless condition it is connectivity for example that is the benefit what i can offer through this cell phone which is the product or the service is connectivity that's why the difference between the condition future wireless and then the transformation the translation into the actual benefit it is again the skill that every single um, entrepreneur should master you know when we became translators then we realized that we are doing you know we are making improvements that's how you can see yourself as well if we are making improvements i see a future a benefit and how i can translate those so that my customer can understand and also understand i'm so sorry it's just perceive the value i don't have to sell i don't have to convince it is there i see you you see me all right so based on that the features um and then the benefits requires then our skill our translational skills all right so that we can see the benefits. For early stage benefits, they sometimes see it or they can see it easily. They are not longer in the stage of features, all right? They can translate or they are able to translate this into benefits. So they can perceive what are the benefits and the um, for the customer, all right? The next step for the early stage though is not being able, and this is very important, I wanted to share this with you because some of the early stages make a list of benefits and sometimes they cannot choose which one is important. They can create a list of four or five items like benefits that they can see in the customer and they, based on that, they start developing a, business, a, a product or a service. The main struggle with the early stage for the benefits once they have it and they have it correctly is that they have too many and they cannot make a decision about where I should start so that I can start developing, making trials and et cetera. So for that, the recommendation is always two things because this is what we have seen as well. First, identify no more than three, but also relate those three main benefits that you have noticed that it is important for your customer related with what you are the best at in terms of operations and also the actual um, product or service or the skill that you master. For example, if you're gonna be a childcare provider and you are seeing that the benefit is um, food, yeah, homemade food, that is the main benefit that even though the parents can you know, uh, get your services and pay for your services because you are taking care of your, the kids, but also because one of the main benefits that they see and you are seeing as well, both is um, homemade homemade um, food, okay? This is a feature though. So the homemade food, it is important to translate it into a benefit. A benefit is better health. A benefit is um, having a warm a, a warm environment for the kids, so confidence for the kids. So I don't know if, if you follow me, but it's not the food itself. I was able to translate it into what it is the actual benefit and taking it from them, from there, then we have to decide, am I the best at preparing this homemade homemade food? We, we have seen that sometimes there is no correlation between the benefits that my client or my customer is seeing or it's important for them and the best skills and the best uh, talent that I have in my team or as my, uh, in myself, within myself. It is very important to be, let's say honest, if you wanna use that term. I invite you to use that term if you want and make that correlation so that you don't waste time, okay? And then you can switch and, and make a good decision from the very beginning. Right. So benefits you identify the early stage. Sometimes they cannot choose. The invitation is only no more than three, but also re relate those with what it is that you are the best at so that you can compete. All right. And then after the early stage, the next group, the savvy, who they are familiar with the benefits, they are familiar with the features, they know how to translate, they know how to make the decisions, they know where to start. 
it is that the savvy sometimes uh, they need to measure. The measurement is crucial. Measurement for the savvy group is the way that they can expand. So once you have your benefits I, and you identify the benefits, then metrics, it is what matters sometimes for them, especially when they have to expand, right? So this is, let's say the roadmap for some of the groups that we have seen and also the recommendations. For the beginners, let's translate, translate, translate features into benefits. For the early stage, let's make a decision. Let's keep it simple, no more than three benefits based on what you are the best at. And then for the savvy group, once you went through the whole, uh, this through, uh, through the whole pathway, let's start measuring. If you can measure earlier, the better. However, in our experience, sometimes they feel a little bit overwhelming, overwhelming when, I, for example, I ask, tell me the benefits, uh, maybe share with me what it is that you know about your customer, then how would you measure this? Do you kind of um, ambition the way that you could put numbers on this benefit or, or on this you know, uh, thing that is important? And that is when they got a little bit overwhelmed or stuck. So let's go little by little, little by little, the invitation is that. Let's translate, let's uh, make the decision, keep it simple, keep it simple, and then let's measure. When we measure, we can compete because it's not the same when you say, I'm a big business, I'm in business for you know 10 years, even the metric of the years and the experience is already a competitive advantage. It's not the same when I say, I'm a mentor, who has been uh, you know, training, I don't know, 20 businesses last year. That is my metric and been raising, I don't know, $200 in comparison with a, uh, with a mentor who has been training 400 entrepreneurs for I don't know how many years and they have been helping uh, raising X amount of money. Those are your metrics and those are the metrics that are going together with the benefits. And I know that we have here several mentors that we can actually, we can be in the savvy, in the savvy group in terms of, you know, start um, comparing the benefits and the performance based on the metrics. That's why it is important to keep track and uh, with the metrics as well. Well, moving, um, moving forward. So then the, the invitation is, seeing the value proposition as a dynamic concept, not an static concept. Let's see value proposition from another perspective, not only from the product, the service, and any other type of offering. That is the result of a work behind that is coming from the business owner. And it is the result of an exercise of the action when I say, I find, I find value. No one else can do it for me. So the way as I do it, the way as I find value is unique for you. I have, it's, it's the same when you lost, when you lose something and someone is, you know, uh, looking for it. There are many ways we can take different, path, different pathways, right? This is the same thing. We have to always keep finding. Now we have a roadmap. You have our recommendation based on what we have seen. This is what has happened to some of the entrepreneurs. So it is important to eat the big elephant uh, bite by bite, okay? Let's not get overwhelmed, but let's keep in mind that value proposition, it is better to take time to maybe analyze it thoroughly, but because it is, let's, um, I'm gonna insist on this. It is the compass for any ever-changing situation in the future. So if you know, if we know how to do it, we're gonna be good, all right? We're not gonna be panicking. We're gonna get out of this survival mode as a business owner, as a small business owners, because this is what we have seen as well. A lot of survival mode. So a lot of stress in terms of not, not like talking about the uncertainty and everything is like not actually clear. Well, it might be, but at least you know the a foundation, you know, you have a recipe at least so that you can make a good decision and bring your mindset and bring your mind to a state where you can think uh, better, you know, and uh, please don't get me wrong. It's like the exercise of think, we have to think. The invitation here in Caravans Library is that let's think together and together means uh, as a collective, you know, it is very important to, for me co to communicate this as well, because we're gonna start a, a center uh, soon 
that the actual, the only specialty is going to be start businesses. And starting a business is not only operationally, technically. You know, we cannot have a good business if we don't drop in good ideas from you. Okay, this is the message from this um, presentation. Now, business model, it is basically how I can create value or my, my uh, business can create value for itself while I am delivering a product, a service, or any type of offering. Value proposition and business models <clears throat> are related because <clears throat> value proposition, I'm sorry, it is what I have to offer. And then the business model is how do I do it? My way to do it. If you want to keep it in very simple words, especially for small business owners. I always explain those concepts like that. Value proposition is here is like my gem. And the business model is how I do it so that the other one can see it. How I do deliver this, uh, the value, right? It's my fingerprint. So that's why value proposition and the customer segment are the two pillars, the main pillars for a business model. The business model, it is the, again, how I create value or my business create value, creates value while it is delivering products, services, and offerings. <clears throat> the most easiest, I mean, the easiest and the simple and the most popular representation of a business model the representation of how I do things in the business, how I run my business, how I structure the business around the business, a value proposition. It is called the business model canvas. It is basically a visual representation of how I can structure my business based on these two pillars, the value proposition and my business, uh, and, uh, my customer, all right? The author of this uh, model is Alexander Osterwalder. I had the pleasure to know him and met, meet with him in Chile a long time ago when she, he just graduated from uh, his PhD. And for me, it's very important to mention this because actually this simple panel or this simple set of panels is a result of his PhD uh, dissertation and research. And, you know, he researched a lot of uh, businesses and he came up with these uh, nine panels. And uh, that's, in my opinion, why it's popular as well, because he saw several cases and then he uh, designed something simple so that businesses and business owners can use it in a practical uh, way. So the business model canvas is this representation, but again, I have my value proposition. It is the foundation, you know, then the way as I do things, the way as I structure my business through my business model so that I can capture value now for myself, for my business. And the value, it is represented with money, of course, and nowadays with revenue. So that's why the crosstalk between value proposition and business model. Value proposition is more seen, is, we can see it in a way that we are capturing the benefits. We are finding benefits for my customer. Value proposition is basically how I make how I make it possible for me as well. How do I capture the value for my business now in, nowadays in terms of uh, money while I am delivering a product or service? Remember, the product or ser the service, the offering, is a representation of your value proposition. All right, so it's a it's a crosstalk. Business model is the way as I do it so that I can capture that value in a form of revenue or in a form of money or any other resource, okay? Therefore, it's your fingerprint. It's the way that you do things. You will find at least nine different aspects where you can start building your business model, building the way that you do business so that you can capture that value for your business out uh, or after, as a result of the delivery of your product or service. You will see here nine main panels that are mostly related with how you operate, how you deliver the channels of distribution, for example, how you and who is your um, partner and key resources, anything and everything that you need, in your opinion, based on your reality as well, on how you can build this so that you can capture the value. Remember, in my recommendation, again, for the business model, because sometimes the dynamic here is, 
you complete the panels. And uh, you create a list of, I don't know, ways that you can relate with your customer, ways that you can distribute your products or services, the key resources that you need, uh, the partners that you're going to be working with, and so on. My invitation is always, first, remember that what is the purpose of the value, the business model. The purpose of the business model is how you can capture value for yourself, for your business, all right? So if any of these panels is not uh, relevant, which I don't think so, but if it's not relevant, always focus your attention on the end, uh, the ultimate purpose, which is creating value. If it's helping me to hit that, let's go and focus on that, pay attention to that, work uh, on that specifically, on these uh, panels. Why I'm saying this, because the design of a business model, the implementation of a business model changes based on these groups. When you are a beginner, beginner, probably this is the um, the representation again of the business model canvas. I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna skip that slide. That slide because this is important uh, as well. When you are a beginner, probably you're gonna be more focused on customer and value proposition, with a little bit uh, on the revenue streams. Those are the main basic questions that you have when you start, right? We are not thinking really about other elements, such as your cost structure, your key resources, your partners. We are just starting. But again, regardless of the development of your business model, it is important to always consider that if I'm a beginner, I'm doing this because I'm capturing, I want to capture the value for my business. Then when I go and I become an early stage, I can be focused after I resolve and understood or maybe figure the value proposition, the customer segment, the revenue streams. I can think on, you know, as another scaffold for my business model. I'm not saying that you don't have to pay attention to the rest. It's just the focus that where you are putting your attention, right? It changes for different um, groups. But again, the outcome and the goal is the same. If you're a beginner and if you're building your business model, always consider that you're doing it because you want to see how you're capturing value for your business. No matter if you're a beginner and if you have just, it's you as an employee and then you have a computer, that's it. How with these two elements, I am capturing value for my business. Okay, I'm no longer thinking necessarily in the customer with the, uh, about the customer because I've already sold that. I already know what are the benefits that I'm uh, that that I already captured based on my level of expertise and skills to capturing for capturing that benefit, right? So this is the mess the main message for you. One of the I like to, we're gonna share the slides, but just to wrap up because we are way we are way over time. Uh, and it is this slide. This slide for me, I would take it as a manual. Uh, even as a mentor, I use it as a manual. It is not only the description of the business model canvas, but sometimes we are not clear on where to start and also what it is that we can measure with these panels. So the numbers that you're seeing here is a suggested order where you can put attention as well or on how to start working on your business uh, model canvas or your business model. The business model canvas has nine segments. The most important, as I mentioned, is value proposition and customer segment. And then we have other um, elements. Right? First is the way that I, this, I actually deliver the value or deliver my products, uh, how I do relate or communicate with my customers. Then what are the main activities that I have to do that are always related with my value proposition? What are the main, the main resources that I need to actually uh, bring this idea or benefits into the reality of a product or a business or a service. What are the main key partners? And then my cost structure, meaning that that means that what are what are the items that I'm going to need to actually create this product and also how I'm going to make money, the revenue stream. All right. My um, the, this is like for me has been very useful in terms of how you can walk through this model. Uh, to have it as a roadmap as well. And also what are the what is the information that I can extract and the decisions that I can make 
if I break it down. For example, if I want to see if um, my product or my business is something that I can do and is feasible, I pay attention to the left. If I want to see if something, and it's pretty intuitive, because if you notice the cost structure that is at the bottom and the revenue stream, it's all about money, right? The flow of money, basically. So if you, if I want to see if this idea of if this business is actually viable, I can just go ahead and pay attention and work on these two items first. So the, the type of information that I can extract from this simple arrangement of panels is very practical. I would recommend using this slide for that purpose when you go and stay at the, uh, at the level of you know, designing a business model, working with your team, and so on. And remember, finding value is an iterative process. It's not only, it's not static, we do it every day. Once we finish this uh, presentation, I'd love to you know, invite you and also convey this me a message for you to say to see things a little bit different in terms of finding value, finding benefits for others, um, and treat them as a customers, rehearse, you know, so that you can uh, develop more this skill. It's very important. If you find this, find your way to find value, it's even more important and more unique so that you can um, create a product and ultimately as well a business or an offering that is unique. The pro the, remember, the business itself is the extension of uh, the individual, the business owner, the entrepreneur, all right? And as a startup, you're going to try many different models, many different ways. It's very, that is part of the research as well. Once you find your business model, you can become a company, you can expand. That is like the natural way that we have seen so far, okay? And uh, you, I'm gonna share these last uh, slides just um, to show the use of, this, of these concepts. Business thesis is basically when, once you have solved what it is that your is what is your value proposition and your business model, we can tell a story. We can start selling. We can start creating the strategies for marketing because it's the foundation. All right. And well, thank you so much for your attention. A couple of more slides with uh, um, advice, but again, it was a pleasure for me to share with you uh, findings, a little bit of the tips and things that we have observed. Um, within the group of people that we've been working with. And uh, thank you so much for your time.